So let's see some of the commandments now that we know that we're the chosen people of God. Now we got to start behaving as such, right? Right, you agree with me. So let's see some of the commandments. We learning that we're Israelites now, right? That's a good thing, right? That's precious. And that's good information that we need to know. So now learning that we're Israelites is yeah, something right. that we got to do now. Hold that. <laughs> Deuteronomy 10 to 12. We got to figure out what we have to do now, right? Watch this. Deuteronomy 10 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Go ahead. And now Israel. And now Israel says, what's your name? Keisha. Now Keisha, now that you know that you're an Israelite, right? And your husband been teaching you. Go ahead. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So Keisha, what do God require of us? Let's see. But to fear the Lord thy God. I mean, we have to be afraid of his judgments. Go ahead. To walk in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. Go ahead. And to love him. To love him. Go ahead. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So, Keisha, how do we do those things? How do we serve God, love him, fear him? How do we do that? Honor his commandments, right? right? Read the next part. That's what it say. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments, right? So let's see some of the commandments now that we know that we're the chosen people of God. Now we got to start behaving as such, right? Right. You agree with me? So let's see some of the commandments. First Timothy 2 and 9. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Uh-huh. In like manner also uh -huh. that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So you see that? God says we have to, the women have to adorn themselves in modest apparel. As God precious daughters, he don't want his daughters dressing any kind of way, right? So, go ahead. With same face. Matter of fact, before we move on, what is modest apparel? Help me out, Keisha. You know, come on, Keisha. I know you know. Now, help me out. What, what is modest apparel? Uh, modest apparel to me is things that are, that are not revealed. Not revealing, right? Or drawing any sexual attention, correct? Right, go ahead. First Timothy chapter two verse nine, uh -huh. in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So we have to, so the women have to adorn themselves in modest apparel. Go ahead. With shame faceness. Shame faceness. What is that? Shame faceness means that a woman is she has like a quiet spirit. She's not loud, stubborn, or anything like that. Matter of fact, this the opposite of that. Proverbs seven and ten. This the opposite of that. This is what it means to when you're not shamefaced. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10, I think that's what it means. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 10. And bo and behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. Right, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. Go ahead, here we go. And subtle of heart. And she's tricky in the mind, right? She'll deceive people into getting what she wants, right? Go ahead. She is loud and stubborn. She is loud and stubborn. So that's the opposite of a shame-faced sister, right? right? So the opposite mm -hmm. is a woman who's loud and stubborn. You see a lot of our sisters like that, right? right. They're loud, just yelling for no reason, right? Go, go back to 1 Timothy 2 and 9. So that's somebody who's not shame-faced. Go ahead. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. In like manner also. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel Go ahead. with same faces. Meaning you're not loud, you're not stubborn, you're quiet, you're meek, you're humble. Go ahead. And sobriety. And so and sober minded, right? Meaning we cannot be smoking, right? Or we can't be getting high, or we can't be drunk. That's when the sin comes in is when you're drunk. It's alright to drink. Go ahead. Not with braided hair. Braided hair, go ahead. Or gold or pearls. Or costly array. Now, now that, does that mean that you can't wear jewels and stuff like that? Because you have a nice bracelet, earrings? No, that's not what that means. It's just saying, do not let that be who you are. Let that be who you are. You understand? Right. Go ahead. But which becometh women professing godliness. Right. You profess godliness when you dress, when you dress modestly in your shame face, right? That's it? With good works. With good works. Go ahead. That's it? All right, now, go to uh, Deuteronomy 20, 25. Deuteronomy, go? Okay. chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right, so women are not supposed to wear clothing that belongs to men, which is your pants, right? 
right? And with the leggings you got on, that's underwear for your dresses and skirts, right? I know it get cold out here sometimes, it's getting winter, right? You wear that under your dresses and skirts, right? Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So not wearing pants, go ahead. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. You have that a lot today. Men putting on dresses and skirts too, especially your rappers and stuff. They be wearing dresses <laughs> and skirts. Or even like you got your Martins, your Tyler Perry's, right? Your Jamie Foxx's, where they play different roles as women, right? Big Mama, uh, Medea, stuff like that, right? God says do not dress like that. The men not supposed to dress like that. That's it, go ahead. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Everybody that do that, God says he hates that. That's what abomination means, right? It's something disgusting to him. So you don't want his precious daughters dressing like that, right? Modest dresses and skirts. And Numbers 15, 38, this also what we're supposed to have on our shirts as the men and dresses and skirts as the women. Watch this. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. That's us. Go ahead. And bid them. And command them. That they make them fringes uh -huh. in the borders of their garments. Go ahead. Throughout their generations. So we're supposed to have fringes on the bottom of our clothes throughout our generations, meaning forever, right? Go ahead. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And you put a blue ribbon on, the, on top of those fringes, right? So what is fringes? I'm pretty sure you know. Well, we got on, right? Yeah. So these are fringes. So we as a people, the Israelites, we're supposed to be wearing that, right? right? Throughout your generations, meaning forever. <coughs> Not just on one particular day, not forever, right? Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. So do you know the purpose of the fringes? All right, these are the purpose of the fringes. Go ahead. That ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord. Right, so we that we may look upon it and remember the commandments of the Lord. So, say if you're trying to get rid of smoking cigarettes, right? So, to so look at your fringes and like, oh, I can't, I can't do that. You understand? Or you might be out in public and say, say you're about to go in on the Sabbath day and buy something. You'd be like, okay, well, I can't go in here with my fringes and somebody going to look at me. Like, oh, that's an Israelite. They're not supposed to be shopping on this day. You understand? Go ahead. <laughs> that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. Right. And do them. And do them, right? Nehemiah uh, 10 and 31. Bring it out. Nehemiah 10 and 31. So that's what the purpose of the fringes is. So we can look at it and remember the commandments. All right? Nehemiah 10 and 31. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. Go ahead. And if the people of the land bring where or any fiddles on the Sabbath day to sell. So if anybody bring anything to us to sell, right? Like Piggly Wiggly, you got your Golden Chick, Advanced Auto Parts, we got your uh, Dollar General, right? If anybody brings anything on the Sabbath day to sell to us, what are we supposed to do? That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So let me ask you, so what are we not supposed to do on the Sabbath according to what we just read? We're not supposed to buy anything, right? right. So did you buy something today? <laughs> you know, I'm not saying, did you buy anything today? It's all right to say yeah. yes. Yes. Right. Now, that's the first step to repentance now. You got to admit it. Yeah. Right? So you did buy something that God said we're not supposed to do that. All right? But this is what you're supposed to do. Now go to Exodus 16 and verse 22. It's all right. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 22. Good. Read. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gather twice as much bread. So what's the sixth day? What will we call the sixth day today? The sixth day would be, well, yes. today is on Saturday. Uh -huh. So what would be the sixth day? If today is the seventh day of rest, what would the be the sixth day? The sixth day would be Friday. Friday, right? Yeah. So at this time, it's Friday, right? Go ahead. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread. What did they do? Twice as much bread. So what we did back then in the wilderness, we gathered twice as much stuff, right? Go ahead. Two omers from one man. Uh -huh. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord hath said. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath right. unto the Lord. So Moses said tomorrow, which would be Saturday, 
is the rest of the Holy Sabbath, right? So on Friday, they gather twice as much food, right? Go ahead. Bake that which ye will bake today. So bake whatever you're going to bake today. Go ahead. On Friday. Go ahead. And see that ye will see. So boil what you're going to boil. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Right. So Moses is instructing us some back then in the wilderness. Everything that you're going to get, hmm? you got some twice as much stuff. Dan. Then the you cook everything, everything right? Yeah. On Friday. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you eat it, get you something. And it says that which remaineth over. Go ahead. That which remaineth over. So meaning your leftovers, right? Go ahead. Lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Lay up. Hold it. Hold it off until in the morning, which would be the Sabbath, right? Go ahead. And they laid it up until the morning, mm -hmm. as Moses as Moses bade. So they did what they they did what Moses said. They gathered twice as much food. They cooked whatever they was gonna cook, and whatever was left over, they left it out, right? Go ahead. And it did not stink. It didn't spoil over. Go ahead. Neither was there any worm therein. It ain't no ants or worms got in it, right? Go ahead. And Moses said, "Eat that today." For today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Right. So he said, all that food that you cooked yesterday, you're going to eat that today. Right? Why he said today? Continue going. Today ye shall not find it in the field. Right. You don't do all what you, you know, go and find in the food and everything on the Sabbath day. Right? So God is instructing us, we got to cook everything and gather everything that Friday. Right? So we and cook it so we won't have to cook it on the Sabbath day. You right. understand? So there's no cooking on the Sabbath day. Alright? Go ahead. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Right, there shall be none. No cooking on the Sabbath day, no buying and selling on the Sabbath day, right? And there's something else that we're supposed to do. Go to Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 3. All right. These are, this is how we keep the Sabbath day. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Six days shall work be done, mm -hmm. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest uh -huh. and holy convocation. A what? And holy convocation. So what is a convocation? A convocation is a gathering, right? A fellowship. So on the Sabbath day, we're supposed to be fellowshipping together. I know you say you with uh, Pastor Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So... You know, y'all more than welcome to come if you want to, right? So, on this day, we're supposed to be congregating as well, all right? That in on it? Ye shall do no work therein. And we're not supposed to be doing any work therein. If you got a job, you got to make sure you try to get the Sabbath day off, right? And it starts from Friday, sundown, dark, to Saturday, sundown, dark. That's the complete Sabbath, you understand? All right? It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Right. It's the Sabbath of the Lord in all our dwellings. So wherever we go, we're not supposed to be working, buying, selling, or cooking. You understand? All right. Good, good, good. Get Leviticus 13 and 30. I got one question. Yeah, yes. Yes, sir. Dan. Why isn't Dan on the chart? I'm mean, on the 12 tribes chart. Ah, good question. Good yeah, question, right? Yeah, yeah, Just Dan. the chart right here, right? Yeah. So Dan was originally a part of, they're still a part of, but Dan was originally one of the major ten major tribes, right? Uh -huh. But let's let's figure out what happened to Dan. Go to uh, Amos eight. Might be fourteen. Might be fourteen. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amos chapter eight, verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. They that swear by the sin of Samaria. So, what is the sin of Samaria? I got you, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, I'm so, I'm looking for that in Kings. <laughs> okay. So, the sin of Samaria, you remember when we was in the wilderness, right? Yeah. And Aaron broke off our golden earrings, all our gold and made a golden calf, right? Yeah, I remember that. In, uh, in Jerusalem, right, once the kingdom was split, northern kingdom, right, they made that golden calf again. And the king... Um, he didn't want everybody to go back. The king of Israel, he didn't want everybody to go back to Jerusalem to worship. So he made a, a golden calf and made northern kingdom worship that golden, golden calf, calf, right? Okay. So, and they placed it in, I believe, Dan, right? Uh -huh. So go ahead and um, read 
Um, Amos 8 and 14 again. Read that again. Amos 8 and 14. Right? So that's the little background history of it, right? Wait, why Dan is not on the chart? Yeah, so okay. I'm getting to it. I'm about to get to it, all right? Okay. Amos chapter 8, verse uh, 14 again. Let's get that. So now we got the history of that sin of Samaria. Follow me? Uh -huh. That's the sin of Samaria. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Amos chapter 8, verse 14. Mm -hmm. They that swear by the sin of Samaria. Right, swear by the sin of Samaria, that gold cow, go ahead. And say, thy God, O Dan, uh -huh. liveth. And the manner of Beersheba liveth. Mm -hmm. Even they shall fall. Even they shall what? Shall fall. Fall from what? From being a part, part of one of those main tribes of Israel. Okay. Because they worship that golden calf during that time of the split. Okay. Follow me? Okay. Right? So... You understand that? Yeah, I understand. Good, good, good. So yeah. you can go back in um, Kings to get that history of when they um, start worshiping the golden calf and when that sin of Samaria actually took place. Uh, probably want you to write that down for me. Uh, okay. Amos 8, it's Amos 8 and 14. Oh, well, I'm recording it anyway. Okay, good, so, yeah. good, good. All right, good. Yeah, there you go. He's yeah, I'm recording it right now. Right? What I'm thinking about. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's so why got I got a bill, man. I got a bill. I got a bill. Right. So, let, matter comment. of fact, let's read the history. First Kings, 20? chapter yeah, 12 so. and verse 28. Uh -huh. Whereupon the king okay. took counsel gotcha. and made two calves of gold. Uh -huh. and you hear that? Read that again. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. Made two mm -hmm. calves of gold, just like they made a calf of gold in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. And said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Right, he said he didn't want he didn't want no other kingdom to go back to Jerusalem to worship, right? Go ahead. Wow. Behold thy gods, O Israel. See, that's saying the same thing in Amos 8. Mm -hmm. Say, Behold your gods, O Israel. Go ahead. No which, other kingdom that's Ephraim on down to Nephtali. Go ahead. Yeah. Which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh huh. And he said, one in Bethel, and the other he put he in Dan. He put he in Dan. So they established that gold, that uh, idol in Dan. Go ahead. And this and this thing became a sin. Right. It became a sin because it was idolatry. Go ahead. For the people went to worship, to worship before for the God. one, even unto Dan. Right. Even unto Dan. So that's why in Amos 8, verse 14, he said, you're going to fall. Yeah. Because y'all established that in Dan. So Dan no longer is a part of 12 the, the 12 tribes. Right? You understand? Okay. Well, they're no longer one of the major tribes. You understand? Okay. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.